Hey everybody, hope you're doing well today. In this video, we're going to look at the quantitative method that can be used to calculate the airflow volume needed to maintain the concentration of a contaminant at a specified level. And this is the first example problem um, for this particular scenario. I'll give you another example in addition to this one. That other example, example problem two, will be in a separate video. But let's go ahead and look at the kind of situation where you would need to use this quantitative method. How much fresh air is needed to maintain the concentration of acetone at a level of 500 parts per million or less during a process where one gallon of acetone is lost by evaporation over an eight hour day. Acetone specific gravity is 0.79, molecular weight 58.1. The ventilation efficiency is uh, considered fair, so the K factor is set at four. All right, I know there's a lot of stuff there, but it's really not that difficult of a problem to do the calculations for. This is the formula that we're gonna use let me go ahead and work through all the different components of the formula. A Q is the airflow uh, rate or volume that we're calculating, and it's the volume in cubic feet per minute. 403 is a constant. 10 to the sixth power is a constant. SG, specific gravity. ER is the evaporation rate in pints per minute. Now just as a side note, sometimes P is used to represent the evaporation rate. You may see that. Now on the CSP exam, ASP exam, uh, this is the formula how, you're, how it's going to be provided to you uh, if you have a problem where you need to use this formula. Uh, K factor or K is the K factor, and it's sometimes referred to as a safety factor. If you see uh, safety factor in the problem, they're talking about the K factor. MW is the molecular weight for the substance that you're working with. In this case, the molecular weight of acetone. C is the desired concentration that we're shooting for. You know, in this particular problem, we're trying to maintain the level at 500 parts per million. That's the uh, desired concentration. Also, as a side note, sometimes L will be used in place of C. All right. Uh, first thing we need to do, and it's, it's a simple formula. Uh, it looks like we just plug in the numbers and do the, the calculation. But there are some preliminary calculations that are necessary in this problem. First, we need to calculate the evaporation rate in pints per minute. We have one gallon, so we need to convert gallons to pints, and then we need to convert eight hours to minutes. Again, we're looking for pints per minute, so our units need to be in pints and minutes instead of gallons and hours. Okay, one gallon equals eight pints, so we had eight pints evaporate over an eight-hour day. 8 hours equals 480 minutes. So now all we need to do to find our evaporation rate in pints per minute is divide 8 by 480. And that gives us our pints per minute value. Now one other thing I need to mention. Uh, in class, um, I, I'm really easing you into these types of calculations and I'm just using uh, units that we're familiar with. Uh, what you might see on the CSP exam, and you're likely to see on the CSP exam, is uh, the use of metric units. Or some measures will be in metric units, some uh, measures will be in imperial units. So, and you have to be able to work with that situation. Sometimes you may have to conv convert from imperial to metric, sometime from metric to imperial, some problems you may have to do both. And for our class and for these videos, I'm just keeping it simple for you. But be prepared, uh, you will need to be able to, to work in metric units on the CSP exam. 
All right. But after we do this, uh, after we do this conversion, after we get our evaporation rate in pints per minute, all the other information is provided for us in this problem. It's pretty straightforward from this point forward. Uh, again, 403 constant, 106 constant, uh, specific gravity is 0.79. Evaporation rate is 0 0.016667, and you could get by with just uh, rounding that to three decimal spaces, uh, or three decimal places, I should say, if you want to. Then our K factor is given to us, and we plug that in. Molecular weight is given to us, and the desired concentration. So now all we need to do is multiply all of these terms together in the numerator, multiply the terms together into in the denominator and when we do that this is what we end up with uh, 21 million 224 thousand da 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 uh, in the denominator we end up with 29,050 when we divide 21 million divided by 29,050 we end up with a flow rate of 730.6 cubic feet per minute so to maintain our concentration at 500 parts per million, um, we're going to need 730.6 cubic feet per minute of fresh air. And once we have this number, then we can use some of the other formulas to determine how much airflow we do have in, in the uh, provided by, by our ventilation system. All right, that's example one. Let me know if you have any questions. Uh, example two will be very similar to this same type of problem with some uh, differences that we'll discuss in, in that video. All right, we're done.